Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you guys what's inside these two multi switches. So, let's go ahead and see what's inside. The first item we have here is this Eagle Aspen 5 input, 8 output multi switch running from 54 to 2150 megahertz or maybe just 2150 megahertz and that would be the frequency so our other item is this generic unbranded SMS 44RP20 four-way multi-switch which runs with a frequency between 950 to 1450 megahertz the minimum frequency is a lot larger than this one but this is a lot more heavy duty nothing too particularly out of the ordinary However, when you flip it over, you get this weird coating, formal coating used to keep moisture out and keep the electronics working. And we also got in this one a very hard metal plate which we have removed the back covering and all of the plastic holding it in place. I just had to use a hammer and break it open. So we'll do this one last. The first item we want to do here is this ordinary multi-switch. To do so, it's quite simple. Just get some stuff out of the way here. What we do is we originally had a backing just like this. That was just plain. But as you can see, it's just a thin piece of plastic. What we want to do is we actually want to go in and pop off this backing which you can just stick a flathead inside and pop off the back cover there we go as you can see just got ourselves a super basic metal box with the plastic cover in two and I have already pre-broke this up as you can see, I used a hammer and hit the side of this metal so that the side will come up and will be easier to remove. So we should be able to just stick a flathead right in and pop it out. There you go. And let's see what's inside. Okay, interesting. So that's the front side that has the four IC chips and on the back, four smaller ones. Now we got ourselves our Eagle Aspen S4180GX 5 input 8 output multi switch running between 54 to 2150 megahertz. And just pop off the back, and we're instantly greeted with something quite different. So here you got all these weird coax wires going all throughout this thing, as well as a lot of these copper, very thin copper sheets. No idea what these are for, perhaps some kind of shielding of some kind, not sure, but very, very unusual. Okay, so so a transistor there. Very odd. There seems to be just soldered right on with no real purpose. There's a whole bunch of tiny little coils, which is pretty typical for any kind of RF equipment. But, yeah, this is quite unusual, to say the least. Lots of MLCCs all over the place. Very, very small ones, though. Interesting. So, I'm going to go ahead, since I can't see on the back here, it's just solid. I'll remove these screws and see what we got underneath. Now, after removing all these screws all bordering this circuit board there's quite a few as well they all fall so as well as a couple on the sides there it's totaling 30 or so screws this won't come up and that's because there are these two bolts here that are soldered directly onto the board nothing that a little pliers won't help 
do so, all I gotta do is just grab the pliers and twist. And I can't do so when I'm holding the camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it, and I'll be done when I come back. There's just one there and one there. After removing both bolts, our next step will be to go to each and every one of these ports and physically break the connection between the pin for the coax connector and be able to free the board that way. In doing so, you simply use your ordinary side cutters to do the task. After pulling with the side cutters and pulling out to remove all the pins that look like this, there's two of them in each of these holes, I was able to pull out and up to free the board. Now this area here, this is just all cast aluminum, so this can all go with your cast aluminum. Just remove all these brass pieces. Once you do that, you're then free to this board. So there's all these wire connections, right, and you're wondering where they go. Well, let's flip it over. There's more of these tabs here, but it's actually three individual circuit boards, which is quite interesting. There's nothing much on them. I mean, there's a little bit of MLCCs all over these in small quantities, but nothing much to write home about. I mean, none of these are gold-plated or anything. So in terms of gold value, minimal to none. However, there's a lot of these tiny MLCCs to pick off of these boards. So that's definitely a plus. And there's no M real IC chips on here to really collect. So there's no gold value in bonding wise either. It's simply just some basic RF switching equipment. So yeah, I hope you found that video interesting. In short, we got ourselves a board here with a whole bunch of tiny ones with lots of MLCCs all throughout and a whole bunch of copper tabs to pop off and put it with your copper. Definitely going to be number two. And on this side, just some wire and some more of these little copper coils. So not too much to write home there. On this board, there's not much either, but there's a few IC chips. No gold plating or anything, so that's nothing really to look for. There are a few examples, possibly, that have some gold value, but there's no plating or anything here. Just some IC chips. Four there, and four on the other side. So, yeah. In short, lots of screws, as you can see, some metal plates, but there's also some nice brass pieces and some heavy pieces of aluminum. This piece here probably weighs about two or three pounds, so definitely worth keeping. So yeah, hope you found that video interesting, thanks for watching, and have a great day.